growth, it's, it's, uh, it's energy, it's, it's people working together. So we're excited about 2019 for sure. I enjoy the work. I, I don't want to be sitting at the desk. Maybe like when I get older, but <laughs> not now. I want to be up and about. I don't mind grease on my fingers. Oh, it's exciting times. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the next next few months, it's where the, the, the whole thing starts. Welcome to the ninth episode of Access Exxon Mobile Ghana. I'm Michaela Cameron. And I'm Deidre Mo. With first oil slated for the first quarter of 2020, Exxon Mobil Guyana and our contractors are progressing a number of critical project activities this year. Definitely, Deidre, and we are already seeing lots of activity right here in Guyana, with arrival of some of the subsea equipment for installation. To give better insight into where we are and what can be expected during 2019, here's what's happening as we continue on the road to first oil. Let's hear from Technip FMC and SIPAM, two companies working on the project, and Mike Ryan, our operations manager at ExxonMobil Guyana. We've been really busy exploring and drilling and getting our production wells ready. The FPSO, the Destiny FPSO, will be sailing away from Singapore in July and will arrive here in Guyanese waters in September. So our operations team is making sure that we're ready to receive it, ready to support it, and then ready to actually operate. The operations team operates the production facility offshore. What exactly does First Oil mean and how close is Guyana to First Oil? Well, First Oil, it, it's a milestone and, and it's a key milestone. So all this preparatory work we've been doing is getting us to that point. But simply said, once we've drilled the wells and we have our subsea infrastructure in place and we've connected the FPSO to the flow lines and to the risers and everything is ready and we've done our checks, we open up the valves and we flow oil to the surface. It, once it hits, once it comes into the FPSO and comes into our separators, we, we call that first oil. First oil on top sides gotcha. to actually start the production phase. The first priority for us is to keep our people safe. As we work through this challenging time to get us ready, we're gonna put your people first and put the environment first. So we're going to be mobilizing all of the subsea, we call them Christmas trees or large control valves that control the oil from subsurface, connected to flow lines and risers that SIPEM will install, connected to the FPSO. So all of that work, it's tremendous work, has to be done in 2019. So we're mobilizing some pretty big, significant vessels to make sure we can do that. Our objective is to continue to teach, mentor, develop, and create leaders here in Guyana because it, it's, it's the Guyanese workforce and, and understanding local culture and content and, and the people, it's, it's, uh, it's vitally important that we include. And I think when people work with ExxonMobil, um, you know, we're, we're very clear on our expectations and we'll hold ourselves and, and, and others and our partners accountable for results, but we'll celebrate those results together, but we'll do it in an ethical, meaningful, honest manner. SIPEM has been appointed by Exxon as uh, a first year contractor, as the EPC3 contractor for them, and we are responsible for the TNI process of the first LISA1 pipeline installation. So we are responsible to connect anything from the bottom of the sea to the surface of the sea. So we are responsible everything underwater. We're going to install the pipelines, we're going to install the subsea structures, and we're going to bring them up and connect to the FPSO. That's where the oil comes out. So we're going to connect exactly what you guys need. We have the pipes here and in another uh, month's time we're going to have the uh, installation vessel arriving in Guyana which is going to do all this installation of all these pipelines. 
we're going to have a substantial amount of work that's going to offload all these pipes into our PSVs and transporting them offshore and get the work of installing it actually at the bottom of the sea. Which means substantial amount of uh, uh, material, equipment, manpower moving around in Guyana. Currently, we have about 4,000 4, plus pipes here. We, we, we are expecting another 1,500 pipes to arrive. So in total, we're going to have about 6,200 piece of pipes. One thing that we've been trying to focus in Guyana is the consciousness of having a safety culture. Now, why is it uh, important for Saipan? Because that's, we have changed our safety concept into becoming a behavioral science. One of the most important aspects of Saipem is safety. We have the Leadership in Health and Safety Initiative and in where we, we, put to, we, put, we put together a set of rules in order to foster our employee into working safe. We have another initiative, We Want Zero, with zero injuries. Everyone, as, as they come to work, they, so they must leave in order to go to their family. In Guyana, this is no different. We want everyone that involved in our operation to be safe and go, to, go home to their family safely as they come to work. So in 2019, we do plan on hiring local citizens to take up different positions at our office. We're currently in the planning process of having an office situated in Guyana, but for, right, for now, we're using the John Financial Base. We also do plan on having four new interns in 2019 that will, like myself and others, go to Houston, Texas, and be trained and come back and fortunately be hired too. Once the equipment is manufactured, okay. it, is, it is then handed over to the subsea services department okay. in, which, in which I operate. Mm -hmm. uh, the subsea services uh, a department, we install, mm -hmm. uh, maintain, preserve and store the assets. Okay. Um, so uh, the, the majority of our operations right now in, in, in Guyana and, and Trinidad are associated with uh, the site receival testing of the equipment. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, systems integration testing, uh, essentially duplicating mm -hmm. how the equipment be, will be run subsea, and then obviously put it on the vessel and the rigs and put it in the ocean. The most rewarding would be the fact that the company accepted me. Okay. So that was the first step. I was like, Whoa, like I got accepted. It's like I felt very lucky and I was very shocked as well. I didn't think I would get through, but here I am today. And so far the journey with them has been wonderful. I I can't ask for more and I look forward to the journey with this company. And this opportunity that we Guyanese now have and I want to take advantage of it. It may be scary but I'm about, I'm willing to take the risk. The first step, get educated. There, there's no way you're going anywhere if you don't have the necessary qualifications and, and well, the experience will come, but get yourself in a position first that puts you on that platform to be employed and then just put yourself out there. We spent one month here in Guyana doing the class training. So we were seeing all of these equipment, it was nice and everything. But when you got to Brazil and you actually see it in, in person, you got to touch it, you got to operate it. It was very, very, very um, rewarding. And you know, it, it's, it really paid off, you know, the classroom training and so on. It was very nice. And But the actual hands-on is what was so nice. There you have it. These companies and individuals play an instrumental role in the oil and gas activities here in Guyana. We expect a lot more to come in 2019 and beyond. At this time, let's hear what's buzzing in our Hey Exxon Mobile segment as we give you a brief breakdown of this year's key activities. Welcome to Hey Exxon Mobile. I'm Casual alongside the fabulous Michaela Cameron. 
In today's segment, we will share a bit about some of the key activities during 2019. First, the drilling of production wells will continue this year, in addition to wells for water and gas injection. And FYI, seven to nine wells will be complete by startup. Casual on that note, another exciting feature is the arrival and installation of subsea equipment, which will be an ongoing activity throughout 2019. This includes SURF, which stands for subsea, umbilicals, risers, and flow lines. As previously mentioned, piping has already arrived here in Guyana and installation will take several months. The subsea trees, also known as Christmas trees, are being delivered and will be installed later this year. These trees are an assembly of valves, spools, and fittings used to regulate the flow of hydrocarbons or other fluids in a subsea well. These trees and other equipment will remain on the seafloor or underwater for the life of the project, which is anticipated to last more than 20 years. I also know that many are excited to know what's happening with the construction of the Lisa Destiny floating production storage and offloading FPSO. I can safely say construction is underway because 12 modules have been lifted onto the vessel. Each module on average weighs about 1,000 150 metric tons and is as tall as a four-story building. After construction is complete, the Lisa Destiny will set sail for Guyanese waters later this year. And that's all the time that we have for this part of the show. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and on Instagram, IG, at Exxon Mobile Ghana for more updates about our operations. And a big thank you, of course, to our sign language interpreter, Mikawanya Israel, who always ensures that the hearing impaired viewers are able to easily follow along with this part of the show. Until next time. Peace. Bye. Here's a quick recap of what's to come in 2019 and beyond. From installation of subsea equipment to the arrival of the Lisa Destiny floating production storage and offloading FPSO vessel, we are getting closer to first oil in 2020. Safety remains our top priority throughout all of our operations, and Guyanese continue to have opportunities to be a part of this new industry at every level. We are so excited for what's to come in 2019 and in the next few years. Thanks again for watching. I'm Michaela Cameron. And I'm Deidre Moe. Until next time. Bye. bye.